Okay, I would like to spend some time talking about functions, okay, and the graph of functions. Now, there's a whole range of functions out there in the mathematical world. Now, I won't deny that, you know, and there's some that even extends into irregular ones like, I don't know, mobile function, I think there's an Euler function, I'm not sure, a Riemann function, okay, there's a lot. However, we're just dealing with very basic ones for this topic about the AMC. Okay, now, just some graphs, you got your standard x squared graph, okay, so the x squared goes like that. Okay, x squared graph, sorry, what am I saying? Yeah, y equals to x squared, so you got the y equals to x squared graph like so, okay? And then it goes, as you know, it goes like that, okay? I will just go on and point out that if I put y equals to ax squared plus bx plus c, okay, this a determines a lot of things. Well, actually the b and c also determines a lot of things. But the a determines whether the graph curves this way or it curves like a U or it curves like an N. If A is positive, it curves like a U. If A is negative, it curves like an N. Okay? So this is your basic Y equals to X squared. Now, we move along to Y equals to X3. Okay? I'll just better leave this here as Y equals to X squared. And then you got Y equals to X3. Let's put as B, sorry, X3, B, X squared plus C, X plus D. Okay, obviously this whole things, uh, this whole equation over here means a lot, but I would just like to just simply, let's just focus again on the first coefficient, which is A. Now, if it's positive, okay, the graph would go like this, okay? Okay, as easy as that, the graph would go like that if it is positive. If it's negative, it will just simply go the other way. Now, this is a way I remember when we are going from x squared to increase the power to x3, which I've learned in high school and it have stuck with me throughout the whole time. Okay, as when you increase the power, you will always increase a turning point. Okay, with obviously there's a few exceptions, but generally speaking, you will always input one more turning point. So you see, the x squared goes like that. When we move on to x3, we got one, and then we're gonna curve again, okay? Now, whether we start from going at the top going down or where from the bottom going up also determines on how many times you are moving, increasing the powers. Now, what do I mean by that? By default, if A is positive, so if I write the x squared graph as this, okay, y equals to ax squared plus b, okay, sorry, bx plus c, okay? Now, if I write by default like that, if A is positive, we are going down, correct? Okay. When we're moving to XQ, okay, XQ, if A is positive, we are going from the bottom, okay, which is opposite directions from X squared. Now, we go into X4, X to the power of 4, okay, plus B, X, plus 3, dot, dot, dot. We're focusing again on the first coefficient. Now, for X squared, we go from the top down, from XQ, we go from the bottom up, from X4, we would just alternate, so we would just be going from the top again if A is positive. All these cases, A is taken to be positive. If it's negative, you just reverse the direction, okay? So, we, we are going from the top now, okay? And since we got two turning points, for X4, there's gonna be three turning points, right? So, we will go one turning point, two turning point, three turning point, like so. This is the X4, X to the power of our graph. We go to X5, we just go from the bottom again, and then increase the turning point. So, I hope that's easy to understand. That's going from x squared to x cubed to x4, okay? Recap again, where the graph starts, it will be in the opposite direction as you increase one power, okay? Assuming that A is positive, and then you will just increase a turning point, okay? If you want to think about it another way, if you've got simply a negative x cubed, right? So, A is negative, just, just follow the same steps. x squared, it goes like this x cube, I will go from the bottom, but now there's a negative, I will go from the top. Okay? Okay, that's easy to understand. Okay? So, basically, this is just some graph sketching tips, if you may call it. If there's such a mathematical term as a tip, which I do not think to believe, because most of them are principles and concepts, but anyways. Now, next one we got is a circle, okay? And the circle comes up a lot on the AMC as well as your, your basic trigonometry and your basic graphing techniques. So let's just go through it right now. Everybody knows, everybody in high school can tell you that this is an equation of a circle, okay? Of radius one. Okay, that is fine. Okay, radius one like so. Now, first question number one. Is that equation over there, can it be written as a function of y in terms of x? Okay, x squared plus y squared equals to 1. 
Well, no, because the definition of function, which I will formally state later, okay, is that for a certain value of x, you only get a one value of y. Now, you, this, in this case, you get two values, so you, you can't do that, okay? But really, there's another way which you can write it out as a function. But never mind, we're dealing with equations of circles, okay? So this gives us the thing over here. Now, a more general form, okay, if we want a circle of radius r, we will write as x squared plus y squared equals to r squared. This is the number one mistake a lot of students make. So I'm telling you right now, okay, the radius is r, but on the right hand side, it is r squared. Okay, simple basic Pythagoras, okay? So x here, y is here, is r squared. That's it, okay? Uh, sorry, x squared, y squared, plus and minus is equals to r squared, okay? But the radius is r. Okay, yes, r. I hope you can see that. Radius is r, but when we apply the theorem, we must put r squared. Okay? So basically, the thing is like this. Okay, it meaning to say, if you've got an equation like this, x squared plus y squared equals to 16, be very careful. The radius is not 16. The radius is 4. 4 squared, right? Okay, I hope you understand that. Now, we go another step further by writing x take away a, squared plus y take away b squared equals to r squared. Okay, the final form of the circle, okay? So, we know that the radius is r, but what seems to be the problem? Well, it has changed, changed a bit, and that is moving the center of the circle, okay? Now, you have to think about it. I would like to ask you, is the center of the circle a, b, or is the center of the circle minus a minus b, okay? Now, I know that the center of the circle is AB. Okay, this is the number two mistake a lot of students make. Don't be mistaken by the minus sign. The under rules of translation, that is it's supposed to work out like that. We're supposed to put a minus sign, but in fact, the center is given by the A coordinate and the B coordinate like so. Okay? That means that is the center of the circle, and then same thing, radius is R. Okay? The radius doesn't change. Now, here is a quick explanation why, why I would like to say it like this. Okay, you see? I started out with the, with the circle at center zero, right? So, for me to kind of reach back to that area, okay, it would, I need to put A over here, and then I need to minus the A, you see? This is the x-axis, right? So, if I put an A inside here, minus A, I will kind of bring, back, bring me back to the circle, you see? That is why, when it is a minus a, we are like pushing the circle in the positive direction. It's very difficult to visualize if, you, if your translation is not uh, at your fingertips, but just, just kind of say that, you see, I, I need to think of a certain value now that when I minus, I will bring me back to the center, okay? Well, that, that value over here is definitely positive, okay? And yeah, which is a over here. And that is why it is, the center is pushed over there because I need like a, like a bigger number now so that when I minus a, I would get back to the center. Okay, if that makes any sense at all. But that's how I remember it. When it's minus a, I, would, I need to push it there, push it in the positive axis so when I minus, I come back to the center. Maybe that will work out for you. Okay, so basically, this is the general form, the general equation of a circle which is center at a, b, and radius is r, okay? Center AB, radius is r, that's correct. So, for example, if we got an equation like this, x plus five squared plus y take away two, okay, equals two, let's just say 35. Okay, we need to sketch that, okay? Shouldn't be a problem, I'll just rewrite it, and be careful, you got put minus here, then you change it to a minus 5, okay? If for clarity's sake, minus 2 is fine, and then you can just root 35. Root 35 squared. So this is the radius over here. Now root 35 would be about 6, is it? 6, 6, times 6, okay, let's just say approximately 6, okay? So where's the center? The center is now minus 5, okay? So it's minus 5 over here, and we're going up by 2. It's 2 over here, the center's over here. Now the radius is about 6, so if I were to draw it, I would definitely cross over the axis like that. Okay? And this is root 35. 6 times 6 is about 36, so it should be, yeah, it should cross, it should be more than 5, which I'm inclined to think. Okay? So basically, this is the equation of the circle, and later, you know, when you have all the questions, it's telling you to intersect lines, secant lines, find the intersect with the axis, so on and so forth, and that is where you need an equation, or at least you need to know how to sketch the circle, okay?
okay the general form is over here like so and there we go just some basic graphs on the functions topic and i hope you enjoyed it short lesson okay